Oh, the first time, yeah, that was quite an um, an eye opening to me because you know I always like printmaking. As I've said before, I've done some experiments back in the days, but to work with a pro, that was that was really a lot to learn, and I I actually enjoyed it. And but what I liked about it most, it was the first time for me to be in an isolated environment as an artist and focus on something. Because I grew up in a community back in Africa where everything is done in the open. And then, um, believe me or not, I'm an artist that's been working here for 35 years. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of privacy in you know my the, the process of my art. I always have people sitting around me. So this was a really nice, different way and, and helped me. It gave me this benefit of having a focus when I'm doing something, um, you know, put a little bit of seriousness in it. I, I encourage everybody to not put too much seriousness in something, but sometimes it's necessary. So I learned a lot. That was a great thing. But most importantly, what I liked about you know, this uh, whole uh, project here at Sitka is a collaborative work between my printmaker master, Julia, and myself. Because collaboration is something that I feel that all artists should have a little piece of it. I know in the Western atmosphere, people like to work in solitary studio environment because they think that is the better way of thinking and concentrating. For concentrating, I, I agree with that, you know, because I remember back in my third grade classes, <laughs> I was being bumped all the time. But when it comes to actually uh, the inspiration side of it, it's very important to be uh, with another you know, artists or in an environment that people are not physically touching you, but they are around you. It really helped my state of mind. So therefore, I really encourage them to continue the programs like this. Oh, yes. I am making a mermaid. We call it back in Africa, Mamiwata. Mamiwata is a symbol of hope. It's a sort of like the queen of the water that bring prosperity. And uh, the tortoise is a symbol of longevity. So therefore, uh, this uh, scene that you see, the, the, the image, the drawing that I did, it's about somewhat, it's about drought, climate problem, and which was caused by too much po pollution. And so this is why you see uh, all the fish down below uh, representing the river, but there is no water. So therefore, there is this um, a woman, this uh, Mamiwata, the, the symbol of hope and prosperity, uh, came on the back of the tortoise for to see the, the environment with her own eye. And so therefore, uh, which will prank a decision or a conversation about it and, and decision be made best to accommodate the, uh, you know, other lives into our human lives, you know, and think of them, what we're doing with our environment and what we can do to make it better for everyone. One of the greatest thing that I have seen here, especially my first time, is you know artists uh, residency that they come from all over. I mean, the last time I was here, someone was here that does recycling art from Europe. I, you know, it was a lady, and uh, this time I actually meet someone that is uh, here also from Canada that uh, deal is a, a drawing artist and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I think this is so important. It is so important. We are local. Um, also, we come and share or have time, long time to uh, have our creations, to bring our creations to life, to ourselves. I think what happened is, is so 
important whether it is art or not for humans to have some time and hear themselves, see themselves, and understand themselves. So I see Sitka as a place of retreat for human folly. Artists are enjoying and benefiting it more, but I see it as a retreat for people to come and reset their mind and uh, actually see uh, themselves through what they do. And also the nature around here, it's very reflective. And I think um, what I will say is definitely keeping this place alive is so important. And anyone that lived in Portland area for the last 30 years, you can see the orientations that artists went through. People have to move from areas because they're all becoming more and more urban. And then they go, many people were forced to buy houses that they can't afford uh, um, as artists just because they want to have a studio. So this place, it's a really lean back place for artists, you know. I, I will encourage this to continue. Uh, actually, storytelling is one of my uh, most, you know, highlight, you know. Uh, well, it is not all kind of story, because when you tell storytelling, people think that you're just telling a folk tale or something, which I do too, you know, in a classroom set and community set. But there is a different type of storytelling that I do that is called what's standing on your soul. A lot of time people may take that negative, but it is not. It is to really help uh, other people or other artists pinpoint exactly what is, what do they think about uh, their art and what, they, what do they truly feel is the weak side or is the highlight side. So what's standing on your soul is a storytelling program that can be sort of like art therapy, art counseling, but also in the community, I do it too. It's also to help people retrieve or uh, retrieve stories of their life to actually come to this point where they can realize that, aha, this is the area that I had never understood. Now, having to go through with someone and hear myself through my own voice, I'm able now to leap over this bucket, which I haven't done for the last 45 years. So it is very important. I do that kind of thing um, with uh, our teachers too, mm -hmm. uh, because they are community members like us, and they have children, they have wives and husbands, but at the same time, they have to focus in this you know, teaching method that won't, you know, allow them to be too flexible in their domestic life. So therefore, uh, that's when something like what's standing in your soul is needed. Yeah, I, I, I think this is so important in the community. So I, I do that and I do surface designing, which is mud cloth. Mud cloth is a traditional uh, design that was created by women in Mali. And the, the symbols are basically diary, sort of diaries. They write the symbols that have meanings that they can use those meaning to write a, a diary of their lives. And so mud cloth is a very interesting, I teach mud cloth both in Africa and in the United States. And it's done on 100% cotton, and all you do is go to the riverside and grab clay and bring it and soak it into the water for a week and then um, dye the fabric into a local herb uh, that is called galama. You boil galama and da uh, dip the fabric into it and then voila, and then when you touch the clay, it just suddenly turned black but you can reverse the areas that are white into plain white again when you're done. So uh, it's called negative painting. So that's another... I know a little of that in printmaking. Ah, <laughs> yes. Painting out the negative. Yes, yeah. yes. So negative painting, basically, what the way we see it is that 
you paint the areas that you don't like. <coughs> yeah, and leave yeah. the yeah. areas that you, the cloth yeah, the yeah, so you like. So, and the last part though is okay. children book. I, yeah. I write children book, but you know, I'm known as ceramist, but I would say all the art forms I do, what I like most, just like you like Fergus, if I could, <laughs> yes, my most favorite thing in life is sitting with people and try to find common ground. Mm -hmm. Not in American debate style, but open conversation that will allow all of us to relax and feel comfortable who we are and talk about our lives. And then suddenly you realize, wow, I was complaining about this, I was overjoyed about, about this, but there's something most important. We are so different, but so much in common. And that's what I like about being an artist.